we've been killing each other since the Stone Age. So, it, you know, whether it's a rock or a pair of scissors or, or whatever, um, I don't think you're going to stop that. Texans is, are proud because Texas. You know, Texas, is, you know, anyone, anyone outside of America can tell you, you know, all of you from Texas, you know, everybody had guns and cows and we'd have Cadillac to oil dairy in our backyard, which is not true, but a lot of people in Texas have guns because they, they believe in that Second Amendment right that's set forth by our forefathers of this country. Uh, I'm a strong believer in Second Amendment rights, and I'm also not going to violate yours or anybody else's Second Amendment right for you to be able to possess firearms would have firearms if uh, the federal government were to step up and say, all right, Sheriff, you're all going to have to take guns from everybody. Not going to happen in this county, and I can speak pretty much for the Sheriff's Association of Texas. None of the sheriffs in Texas are going to do that either. And they were as much a part of life as the, the television or the China cabinet. I do remember that my father was incredibly strict. Do not touch my guns, ever. I think, you know, it definitely plays a, a part of what part of the country you're in. I mean, I wasn't raised with guns, but we are still in Texas, and it's, you know, a lot of the South and definitely the rural areas, um, there's just pr prominent. I mean, my wife has, she grew up with guns. She has pictures, when she was a baby, of her literally teething on a pistol. Guns, especially in Texas, I would think we do have a rich history of, of cowboys and saloons and stuff like that. It's, it's, uh, it's a cultural generational thing that's just been passed on and down here for a lot of people a gun is like an heirloom it's it's a piece of history um, you can take this gun it was made back then used by this person and has cultural significance because it's you know it's a lot like finding writing on a wall I actually bought my first firearm for myself when I was 17 years old I bought a 22 rifle um, I knew how to shoot pretty well already by that time. We were taught to respect, you know, guns. And, um, you know, I knew right from wrong as far as, you know, gun control or, you know, gun safety and stuff like that. So I was raised with guns. I was raised in um, what they call the, the Kemp edition of Wichita Falls or part of the east side. Um, around guns, we actually never had guns in our house. So I was really having really been a problem with us. Not so much people are infatuated with guns, it's just a culture. It's a culture of living from hunting, uh, even protection, mainly from the hunting aspect of it. I, I think it's people don't, don't know anything about guns, are scared of them. So, you know, it's just like anything else that you're scared of. Oh, you, you know, we don't like it, we don't want to have it, we don't need to have it around. To me, in Texas, there's always been a healthy gun culture and then something else. <laughs> that healthy gun culture that I grew up with was hunting and... Um, that guns were used as, as part of, it meant something between fathers and sons and sometimes daughters. <laughs> and there was nothing, that, there was not this angry kind of um, paranoid attitude that, that we have to have guns or communists are going to take over or, or some. But, but to me, the unhealthy or destructive part, it really comes from fear. There's no doubt, I mean, my, my gun sales in December were up 76 percent over prior year and then you added Sandy Hook on that and then the the president's coming out you know obviously people pushing against more gun laws and my business as his year over years over a hundred percent up I got one in a couple weeks ago and we literally were in the process of checking it out and carrying it out to put it on the shelf, and a guy saw it and said, I want it. And so it never even made it to the shelf. Our joke has always been that Obama's one of the best gun salesmen that there's ever been out there. I'll never forget it. That day I woke up, uh, I woke up late for a doctor's appointment or something. 
and it was just a very off day from the get-go for me. I was there with a friend, and um, we were about, we were three tables in, or sitting by the glass door to the cafe, and we were just catching up and talking. I was about to get off work in about an hour. Um, I'm sitting there, and um, a couple of uh, customers was coming up. Just out of nowhere, you know, our conversation was interrupted. And then you hear like a bang. And I was like, whoa, whoa, what was that? And then we looked over to the cafe and you couldn't see anything. It was silent. Couldn't see anything. I was like, okay, maybe a cappuccino machine exploded or something like that. And I heard this sound. And I thought, I, I don't know why, I thought some kid had taken out one of these Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle goblets that we had and just threw it on the ground. My first thought, don't know why. And then at some point, it just clicked. Like, that was, that was a gunshot. And then I turned back over, well, would you like some? Then bang, automatically, I went down naturally. And then at that point, I heard, I heard that same sound again. I just dropped to the ground. He fired a couple times. I don't know how many. Turning around, I saw him shoot a girl. And from the angle I was sitting, he shot her in the face. I was staying, and then all of a sudden, I hear my manager, Susan, She's running towards the back and she's yelling, everyone get to the back room. And I went to the front exit of Hastings while crawling, like really quick. And I opened the door and I turned and I was like, hey, y'all were better bring y'all. I remember the image of just the gun blast and the sound and that happened. And I just, you know, next thing I know, I'm on the ground and my body went numb. I didn't feel any pain. My body just went numb, and um, I knew that I had been hit. I'm running like this. I'm thinking of Sonic the Hedgehog, anything fast, like just going. Like, I haven't run like that since track. And I was trying to get to Walgreens, but I end up uh, at Taco Bell. So basically, I did head for the border, as you can say. I started going to the cafe. I hear, I hear one of the Hastings phones ring, and I just grab it, and I say, I don't know what just happened, call the cops, someone might be hurt. I hang up the phone and I see people laying on the ground in the coffee shop. The things I saw that night, you know, seeing a girl lay next to me in a, in a pool of blood with a hole in the back of her leg um, while she's trying to call her mom and crying and um, you know, those images will never leave my mind. In, in the 10 or so minutes that that happened, because I honestly don't know how long it took, it just spread. That was, that was the strangest part. So all of that could happen in 10 minutes. You know, I went there just to have coffee and to catch up with a friend, and I left in the back of an ambulance um, with two gunshot wounds, and I was just there having coffee and I often joke about you know I didn't even get a refund like <laughs> I just got that coffee. What Hastings uh, changed for law enforcement um, there's more officers off duty that's carrying firearms now regardless of where they're at. How we didn't have more people killed it is a grace of God that's all it was that's all it was. When I hear a gunshot fired like in real life, I, I immediately think of that. It's not, it's not the same as whenever you, you hear it on, in a video game or playing it on a movie because there's, there's just something in your brain that tells you this is real life. It's, it's not something you can turn off. There's been days that have been really hard um, that I don't want to talk about guns. I don't want to... I, I quit watching TV, actually, after the shooting because... I never realized how saturated violence is in everyday life. A gun is a powerful symbol. It's a powerful catalyst. And it's very easy and accessible to get to. And when someone who, for whatever reason, may be out of control, that gun is so easy to grab and use. And that's, that's what many sociologists note, is that that gun has a powerful presence and is lethal. If someone assaults me with a knife, I have a 1 in 16 chance of dying. 
If someone assaults me with a gun, I have a one in four chance of dying. Whenever you do sit down and you do put restrictions on, on guns, it, it can help. And even though people, I do believe, have the right to own their own guns, they, it shouldn't be absolute. That's our biggest thing is we've got lots of laws, lots of regulations on books concerning guns. Let's enforce those, put some bite into those laws that are already there, and hopefully, you know, that's definitely a first, a good first step. It breaks my heart to think that, you know, because I know they can put as many laws as they want on guns. They can try to control them, but the fact is there's other weapons out there. I think it's kind of silly that the emphasis has been put on guns and blamed. I truly believe how people are raised around firearms, understanding of firearms, um, is, is how I understood firearms, and people my age understand firearms. There are people who are, who are brought up well and well socialized and who don't have mental health issues and who have some ability to restrain themselves and at self-control that uh, under the worst possible circumstances they won't lose their temper and hurt somebody. There are others who are not so stable and not so uh, self-regulated. There, there should be a way in our modern high-tech society to have information that a young man is unstable and has been treated in mental health facilities, is full of anger and has made threats, he ought not be able to buy a gun. You, know, you have to fill out the form, what they call a 4473, you have to show your identification. It's a relatively simple process, and, um, but everything that we do here, any gun that leaves the store gets a background check on it. I mean, the form is pretty straightforward. If you've had felonies, if you've had, you know, been in a mental institution, things like that, you can't buy a gun. Uh, I could take you to bars in this city. You can buy any firearm that, you, that they've got available right then. No paperwork, probably stolen, maybe not reported or reported, but without a serial number. There you have it. I'm not saying they don't need to be checked. Everybody needs to do that. I expect if I go to Academy today to buy a new Glock 22, I'm going to have to wait. I'm good with it. But then again, I'm a law-abiding citizen also. Maybe limiting guns won't prevent that, but at least forcing states to comply with a universal measure, we can probably see a drop in violent crimes like that just throughout, throughout the country. It's never changed my view on guns, and, um, you know, I actually shot a gun for the first time in October, and I didn't know how I was going to react, because that sound it was just such a small space, and uh, that smell of, of gunpowder. I know a lot more. I'm more educated about guns now. Um, but I think to blame a gun or to change my entire viewpoint on guns would be kind of silly because a gun didn't walk in there and shoot me. I believe people kill people, guns don't kill people. People use guns as a tool to kill people. I still believe, basically, you know, it's not the gun who kills people, it's, you know, people who kill people. And this binder is full of strangers and people who wrote me, who would send me letters, who an entire community would you just sign cards? I had a lady from Switzerland write me, actually. I keep this binder to go through and to remind me of um, that there are people who care and people who, there's, there's still good in this world. Child who saved this world and this ten million more probably could if we all just stopped and said Yeah.